Hello, Club Culture family. If you're on YouTube, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and hit that bell. And if you're on your favorite streaming platform, thank you for tuning in and make sure you leave us a rating. This is episode 66, and I have a special guest with me today. I have Layla with me for episode 66. What's up, Layla? Hey. Now, ain't nobody else here but me and Layla, so we gonna carry this episode on our own. Period. Now, it was a post that we, uh, the club, club culture had put out wanting new faces on the pod and some uh, team members. And Layla reached out and said she would like to be a personality. Yes. So this episode is all about Layla and I. Period. Let's go. All right. So we have a game on the pod that we like to play with guests and it's called Weird or Null. Okay. So I'm going to give you a headline. And you just let me know if you think it's weird or no, and you get one sentence to explain why. Okay. All right. Stranded on the Eiffel Tower, a couple decided to wed with an AP reporter there to tell the story. Is that weird or no? No. Why? That's cool. You stranded on the Eiffel Tower? That's kind of cool. I like that. That's like a a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Okay. Might as well get married. Now, that sentence was long. It was a couple sentences in there. Oh, okay. Okay. One you sentence. get one sentence. One sentence. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a $1.4 million speeding ticket surprised a Georgia man before officials clarified the situation. Is that weird or no? Say it again. A $1.4 million speeding ticket surprised a Georgia man before officials clarified the situation. Yeah, that's weird. Why? Because why is a ticket $1.4 million? That's a good question. Prosecutors say a reckless driving suspect bit an NYPD officer's fingertip off. Is that weird or no? Who bit the fingertip? Uh, uh, <laughs> a reckless driving suspect. Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> why? Because why are you out here biting people's fingertips? <laughs> uh, Benny says women stole Halloween from kids. Is that weird or no? It is weird. Why? Halloween's for everybody. Okay. Okay. We're going to circle back to a Halloween topic I got. Okay. A uh, Long Island man allegedly pulled a gun on a six-year-old boy over Halloween candy. Is that weird or no? That's weird. <laughs> why? Because why is you pulling a gun on a kid? <laughs> <laughs> over Halloween candy. Over some candy. That's not necessary. Uh, teacher on leave. After allegedly dressing as the devil and telling kids, hell, Satan. Is that weird or no? <laughs> um, I'm going to just say no. It's not weird. Why? Because she just doing her thing. She's playing her part. She's playing her part. Uh, Flavor Flav sings the national anthem at the Milwaukee Bucks game. Is that weird or no? It was interesting. I'm supposed to say weird. Yeah. Weird or no? I mean, no. Nah. Let me bring it up closer. No, nah, it's okay. not weird. Okay, why? Because Flavor Flav is a, I guess, a legend. Okay. <laughs> Kendrick Lamar's Good Kid Mad City album is the longest charting rap album of all time. Is that weird or no? No. Nah. Why? That's a good album. It's a good album. A uh, Mormon mother arrested after taking her 16 year old son to Alaska from Arizona. Because she thought he was chosen by God in the second coming of Christ. Is that weird or no? That's weird. Why? Mormons are weird. Okay. Mm hmm. Okay. <laughs> I said what I said. <laughs> uh, Clay Travis is willing to bet $1 million that a high school boys state champion basketball team can beat the WNBA champion team. Is that weird or no? That's weird. Why? Because they part of the, wait, a WNBA? The WNBA champions, a high school boys state champion basketball team could beat them. That's weird and sexist. Okay. So your why is sex, it's, it's, it's sexist? It's, it's sexist because why a WNBA team? Why you choose that? Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, last one. 2 Chainz says he gets anxious working on mu- new music with Lil Wayne. Is that weird or no? No. Why? Because Lil Wayne fell off. <laughs> I 
<laughs> Damn. I, th- I didn't know you was going to say that. I, I, thought, I thought he was going to say, oh, because it's Lil Wayne. I, mean, <laughs> I thought that too. Like, it's Lil Wayne. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. So that was weird or no. Thank Period. you for playing. Thank you for playing. Period. It was fun. It was fun. Uh, so speaking of Halloween, did you celebrate Halloween this year? I did. Well, uh, what was your costume? Um, I went as Bob Ross. Black Bob Ross. Okay. Yes. You took any pictures? I sure did. Oh, go ahead. Uh, go ahead and airdrop that to this computer so I can see what that looked like. Yes. Um, I sure did. And I won third place for my costume this okay. year. Okay. Look at you. So very happy. Last year I was Gordon Ramsay. And so I was trying to beat out my family members this year. Oh, so this was a family event that you went to? This was a family slash friends Halloween party that we had last Sunday. It was a whole bunch of us in there. Okay. Okay, I sent it. Uh, all right. Oh, wow. All right. Uh, do you mind me sharing this? Go ahead. Okay. So this was Layla's Halloween. Co- <laughs> <laughs> this was uh, Layla's Halloween costume for Halloween. Well, I said that already, Halloween. I did. Yeah, this is funny. That's a funny costume. It's the best. The uh the afro is um it's it gave. It gave. You know, so Bob Ross, his afro like real put yeah. together. It's a, yeah. it's a nice little circular ball. Yeah. Yours is giving very much nigga. Yeah, I'm <laughs> nigga Ross. Yeah. I made that very clear that I was nigga Ross. Uh-huh. Yeah. My afro is big, so I was like, I want to make it like as small as possible. So I kind of kept it on the kinkier side without. And did it you out. try to give yourself childbearing hips? Uh, no, them the pants is just too fucking big. If we being honest, they look like this stuffed, like you stuffed clothes in them. They are just regular mom jeans that I just can't fit no more. Oh, okay, okay. And you did that painting just for Halloween? Oh, I did that painting outside of Halloween. Oh, okay. I just thought it was appropriate. And you say you want third place. I want third place. I want to know first place if you third place. Uh, Cruella DeVille and my friend came as Cruella DeVille and then she bought her friend and she came as the dog, a oh. Dalmatian. So this right here, <laughs> this is another Halloween costume that went viral on Facebook. And it's this woman that chose to be Tina Turner. Oh, that is fucked up. She chose to be Tina Turner, the scene where she was beating on Ike in the car. That is messed up. Because I'm yeah. looking like, who is that? Who is she supposed to be? Oh, shit. Wrong person. Yeah, I was going the wrong way. But yeah, she posted this on Facebook and it went viral. And so it stirred a conversation about, you know, was this an appropriate Halloween costume or was this very insensitive? That was insensitive. She just died. Like, she, she just died. She Why is y'all making die. fun of her pain? Now, she said in defense that she basically chose this scene particularly because it's when Tina regained her power back f- from the abuse. Don't make excuses. Cause why you got them bruises on and shit? <laughs> okay. I thought that shit was wild as fuck. <laughs> That's vile. And it's, uh, I think October is the uh, national domestic violence awareness, but so it just, she ain't read the Mm-mm, room no, nearly at the all. Room. No, 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 no. Yeah. And I'm, I usually laugh at everything. I mm-hmm. have a dark sense of humor. Like, it's funny, but it's, like, not funny. Like, you couldn't do nothing else? Yeah, she definitely has so many other options. So, it's pretty interesting why she chose to be that. That's like them people that went as the Twin Towers in a plane. Did that you see that? That was this year? Yes. No, I didn't see that. It was some kids that uh, went as the Twin Towers. Like, that's foul. Like, like teenage kids or, like, smaller than that? Like, toddlers. So, then their parents did that? Yes. Oh, okay. Foul. Well, speaking of jokes that's not funny... Uh, Kai Sonat, do you know who that is? Mm-hmm. Okay, so he did, uh, he's doing currently a seven day stream of being in prison. Mm-hmm. And he's having, uh, celebrities and public figures be a part of the stream with him. He's recently had Drewski, Chris Sean Rock on there. And so, social media, they decided to talk about, like, whether this was appropriate or not to do a stream in jail. So, the other side was like, you know, this is pretty funny. It's cool. And then the other side was like, th- we should not be portraying jail as entertainment or fun. Yeah. What is your take? I agree with that. Like, Kai Sinai is a funny nigga to me. Like, I mm-hmm. like him, but, yeah. like, the jail stream is kind of corny as fuck to me. Okay. It's people out here really struggling, really in jail mm-hmm. for things that they may or may not have done. So, mm-hmm. 
why are we making that entertainment? And really, it's not funny. I watch some of the stream, and I'm like, I don't really find any of it to be funny to me. So, not even Drewski's uh, segments. I didn't see that. Hell, that shit had me died. Dead as that. fuck. I was, that was the funniest part of the stream. The other shit I didn't really tune into, but whenever Drewski's on the screen, I watch Drewski. He's funny to me. He is funny. I, I saw, like, the Chris Sean Rock stuff. Okay, I, yeah, I didn't watch and that. And I was like, okay, this is dead. Yeah. I don't get it. Well, I was watching another podcast talk about this topic, and they brought up a point of, like, selective outrage mm. and how, like, Throughout hip hop, we've always talked about prison and jail and crimes and shit. So why is it that when this person does this stream, is fucked up to do? But what about all this music we've commercialized and people have? If them people really went to jail and they making music about jail, then that's just making music and being an artist. Uh huh. Versus Kai Sinat, who I don't think he's been to jail, yeah. except that one time when he did that whole thing in New York. But I'm like, was he in jail for real? Mm. So, like, no, it's fake. Like, people who make music about being in prison, and like, that's their experience, that's their world. So, mm. to me, that's different. Do you think that there's things that just should not be made a joke out of? Like, outside of this this topic, I started to think about, like, comedians now how they say it's such a sensitive time to be a comedian and then jokes and shit like are there things that just should not be made jokes i think there is a line i think there is a line i think it's a very thin line because again like i'm a person like i laugh at everything mm -hmm. i have really dark sense of humor mm -hmm. um, i actually recently went to go see dave Chappelle live mm -hmm. uh, october 14th at he made jokes about everybody, uh -huh. like disabled people. Yeah. He made Jewish jokes. He made all types of jokes. Yeah. Um, I do think it's a lot, though. I do think, you know, certain things aren't funny. Mm -hmm. um, now, did you find Dave Chappelle's? Uh, <laughs> he was cracking up, was he? <laughs> <laughs> he go get me canceled. <laughs> they go, these people go find out who I am. They go cancel me. Hell yeah, I was laughing. That I mean, that that's the whole point of this conversation is like selective outrage. You know why certain things that we, not even we, because it's it, it sometimes like it's a personal thing where you just feel like, all right, that's not funny, but to so many others, it is funny. It is so. Like, how do we even get to a middle ground between, all right, this shit should not be talked about. This is not a joke. Okay, like, tragic shit. Mm -hmm. Okay, like 9-11. That shit's not funny. Yeah. That shit's not funny. I know we people make a lot of 9-11 jokes, but I'm like, okay, people died. Mm -hmm. Leave it alone. Okay, but, like, when he made, like, the disabled people jokes, I was like, okay. Like, it was kind of, per my mom in a wheelchair, and he over here making fun of people in wheelchairs and mm -hmm. shit, and I'm like, okay. Just roll with the punches. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I feel like I don't know. I don't know how to answer that. To be honest with you, it's a thin line. Mm -hmm. That's what I say. Mm -hmm. And yeah, yeah, people gonna get offended regardless. People gonna get offended by anything. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I think it's a way to say stuff if you want to make it a joke. Like true, comedians just want to be able to just say whatever the fuck they want to say. Yeah, it's like. I remember this one skit that's so long ago by like Corey Holcomb, and he had said that he had a he had a three year old or a three month baby, and the mom was gave the baby a bottle, and the baby was trying to already hold it by itself. So I think it was three months. The baby was already trying to hold the bottle by itself, and he was watching the baby try to do it. And in his mind, he made a joke and said he just saw his baby jagging off a penis, and so. That resurfaced in current times, and I'm just like, is people saying it's funny? Is people saying that it's not funny? And to me, I'm like, that shit's not funny. No. Why are you sexualizing a child? Why are you sexualizing a three-month-old baby? Yeah. So in cases like that, it's a line. Yeah. Baby jokes. Uh, who else did that? It was uh, P. Davidson who also made a baby joke. Uh -huh. That shit's not funny. Mm -hmm. It's not funny. Kevin Hart got... Uh, he had to be removed from hosting the Oscars because he made past jokes about his child, it's like not wanting him to be gay or doing stuff that he deemed could be gay. He's like, that's not gay. And so he, they wanted him to apologize for those jokes. He's like, no, I'm not doing that. I mean, what was funny and socially acceptable back then is different now. So yeah. it's like, leave people alone. Yeah. That's how I feel. Stop digging a motherfucker's past and being like, you said this. Mm -hmm. I don't, yeah, I don't think what you've done in the past, if you skated past that, didn't have to take accountability for it then. You shouldn't have to now unless it uh it had detrimental effects on the people that you did it for. Like 
Like, I don't, I hate talking about R. Kelly, but like, mm. you did all of that in the past. Yeah. That has trickle down effects today. It does. A it joke does. Sh- shouldn't have trickle down effects on somebody today. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Okay. So moving on from that, it was another thing that was a hot topic. So we talked about Keith Lee mm-hmm. and his reviews of Atlanta uh, restaurants last episode. Yeah. And it's a week and a half, two weeks now, and this man is still trending. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so what recently happened was uh, Chad Ocosinco, mm-hmm. Ocho Cinco, mm-hmm. Ocho Cinco, he had said that he didn't fuck with Keith Lee basically making reviews. He thinks that it's bad for him to give our um, businesses, black businesses, bad um, critiques and reviews like that when we work so hard and it's hard to be an entrepreneur. Yeah. And so, social media went off on him because they felt like you're speaking on stuff without research. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Even his daughter came out and told him, like, no, dad. And so, he recanted. It was like, my daughter corrected me. So, you know. He don't know what the fuck he's talking about. Yeah. Everything he said was like, okay, clearly you don't watch. You don't watch Keith Lee. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm s- noticing that people are having critiques for Keith Lee. And I'm like, all of y'all who have critiques clearly do not watch this nigga. Yeah. Because Keith Lee is humble and Keith Lee is very respectful in all his reviews. Mm-hmm. It's this other black dude. I think his name is like Mr. Chime Time. Mm-hmm. And I had saw it on my story today. It was like, oh, this is the real villain. Uh-huh. And he don't like shit. Yeah, he don't like nothing. He be like, no, this shit is nasty. Like, yeah. that's who y'all need to come at, Dan, if you want to talk about bashing. <laughs> but... Keith Lee, no. Keith Lee is so respectful, yeah. and he gives to me like a un, like as I mean, I guess it's biased, but like he gives the good and the bad about things. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Chad, don't know what the fuck he be talking about, and I'm glad he got corrected. Do you think that celebrities should get different treatment than the common folk? Nah. Okay. Nope. It was a, a comment left on a blog that posted the whole Chad and Keith Lee thing. And the comment was of a person with a verified check. And he was like, they're uh, being someone of some type of stature or celebrity or public figure. You have special treatment Mm. and there's nothing wrong with that. Basically that just comes with you being able to garner this type of success for yourself. Right. Uh, And so people, you know, like that's just what it is. And you should walk in that light, I suppose. Which I can see that. Uh-huh. But Keith Lee is like an influencer. And so it's also like that line of, are you an influencer? Are you a celebrity? Are influencers celebrities? Mm-hmm. So I don't think Keith Lee deserves special treatment. Okay. You know, but but again, still, I feel like nobody deserves special treatment. I mean, okay, you worked hard for your shit. You're a celebrity. So yeah. you, okay, fine. But yeah, then I that would go to what we consider Keith Lee. Is he a celebrity or is he just an influencer? I mean, that's why, like, that's what's different today. Like, anyone could be a celebrity. Like, anyone could have in the past, but you pretty much was chosen sometimes. Yeah. Now it's like, you go viral one day, you try to capitalize off of being viral, and you could become B. Simone. Right. Or Pretty V or somebody like that. Yeah. And Sorry. those people are celebrities. Are they? B. Simone, Pretty V, DC, Young Fly, they all are wild and out legends now. I would say DC, Young Fly. Okay. I have a bias against B. Simone. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I like Pretty V. I don't know if I would call them celebrities, though. Okay. I don't know. I mean, a celebrity to me is a person every nigga know. Okay. To me. I mean, it's celebrities that, like, even, like, Kanye West, he's not probably as big as he would be in, like, Pakistan. Kanye West is probably big as fuck in Pakistan. I don't know. It's, I don't know. Well, I just feel like you can even be as big as Kanye West and not be like how he is in U.S. in Pakistan. I'm sure Pakistani niggas is bumping Kanye. <laughs> Kanye uh, is huge. Uh, I'm I just using it as an, uh, as an example. Yeah, I, got like, you. I got you. Yeah. I got you. But like niggas in Pakistan don't know Pretty V. They probably don't at all. No shade to Pretty V. I love her. I love her to death. She's so funny and cute. But Dave Chappelle not, probably not. No, Dave Chappelle is a legend. <laughs> Dave Chappelle is a celebrity. Okay. Okay. All right. A little strickler about these celebrities. <laughs> uh, so you had put something specific in your guest assessment form, and you were like, I won't speak on things that I have no knowledge of or haven't done research on. 
And so what is your reasoning for doing that? Just speaking with the whole trad thing. Why did you specifically put that as something unique about you? I'd put that as something unique about I me. believe you did. If you didn't, my bad. But it, it just, it's, it's, uh, it stuck out to me when I was reading the guest assessment form. Okay. So I have a podcast bias, even though I'm on a podcast right now. Uh-huh. Um, I feel like niggas get on podcasts and just be talking about shit that they're not credible about. It's my biggest pet peeve. Mm. And so that's why I was like, me, if I don't know nothing, if I had no expertise or something, I'm going, I'm going to shut the fuck up. Yeah, I'm gonna shut the fuck up. Okay, um, because I'm not credible, mm-hmm. and I guess like my bias comes from seeing like all these men on podcasts talking about <laughs> how relationships and women need to do this and women need to do that, and half them niggas ain't never had a wife, yeah. ain't never been in a relationship. They yeah. some incels. Like, no, you have no credibility to speak on a relationship, mm-hmm. and so. I have like a little bias against podcasts. I'm like, these is just regular niggas. And why do I want to know a regular nigga's opinion? That's just me. So do you listen and watch podcasts? Like on a week, like this is like part of your weekly routine is? Um, business related podcasts. Okay. So, uh, nail tech related podcasts and okay. like, you know, things like that. Okay. It's crazy. You ain't say club culture, but that's fine. What I was getting <laughs> to with that was if, you probably consume more. You'll be able to like decipher between that bias. That shit is just a small percentage of how many podcasts is actually out for there. Sure. For sure. <clears throat> I listen to the read too. The I read. Like the read. Yeah. That's one of my favorites. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you said that you had took a podcast class. Yeah. What, why, what was that for? It was part of my curriculum for being a nail technician. No, so I went to film school. Okay, yeah. I went to uh, Columbia, and I studied interdisciplinary documentary. Okay. So I took creative writing classes. Mm -hmm. I took radio classes, which is where the podcasting class came in. Okay. And then, you know, I took, like, writing, photography, all of that. So, Mm -hmm. like, I had to take a podcast class. Yeah, I uh. I want to say that was probably, like, what, 2018, 19? No, like... I graduated 2021, Mm -hmm. so I took that podcast class 2019, 2020. Okay. Yeah. I would say that's kind of probably around the time podcasts became, uh, uh, what's the word? Like, you can financially, like, Mm -hmm. gain from podcasting. Um, Yeah, it came up. It definitely came up. Yeah. Uh, Did you actually, like, learn anything that that you can remember from that class that you can see, like, people practicing or doing today? With podcasting. Okay, so let me clarify. The podcasting class was more like an audio class. Oh, okay. So, like, what we're doing behind the scenes here, how uh-huh. to, like, set up uh-huh. and, like, how to get perfect audio and, okay. like, gain. It was kind of like that. Audio engineering. Yeah. I, okay. I didn't sit down with no nigga. <laughs> 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 no. <laughs> that would be cool, though. It yeah, would have. That would be cool. No, it was like we <laughs> we told personal stories. Okay. So like all I did was narrate my own stories and things like that. Um, which I don't. Okay, in that regard, I don't see. I feel like podcasts today are like you're sitting down with somebody and you're talking to somebody about like world events or mm-hmm. pop culture. Mm-hmm. Um, this was more like an NPR style, like narrating a story, like a documentary style podcast. Okay. Yeah, it, it's actually. It's crazy. A lot of people like those type of podcasts, especially yeah. crime stuff. Yeah, I was going to say like Bailey Syrian or whatever. She does yeah. makeup and she tells like crime stories. Yeah. Things like that. Yeah. Uh, Now, I wanted to get to know you a little bit more because you have an interesting story. Now, on our podcast, we get real, we get deep, and we have a dedicated sector to mental health. So, with that being said, I wanted to ask you a few personal questions because I think your story is actually really interesting and beautiful. So I'm glad you thought that because I was scared filling out that form. <laughs> so what's so daunting about the form? I was like, are they going to find me to be interested? <laughs> <laughs> well, that is the purpose of the form. But no, you, I already like have a good sense. I just still like to have everybody do the form because I also want to know what are reservations you would want to talk about. Yeah. Uh, so take us from the beginning. Where were you born? How was your upbringing? And we can start the. Where was I born? Yeah. Were you born in Indiana or Chicago? This is so controversial. I was born in Chicago. Okay. 
Okay. Uh huh. I was born in Chicago. Okay. I lived in Indiana. So as soon as you was like, what age did you move to Indiana? Oh, it's so controversial. Okay, because people get on me about this. Uh huh. Okay, so I was born in Chicago, moved to Indiana when I was three. Okay. Just me and my mom living in Indiana. Yeah. She did not want me to go to CPS. Okay. She was like, fuck CPS. You're not doing that. You're going to school out here in Indiana. Okay. Did the whole school in Indiana thing. My whole family lived in Chicago. So. So they say you're not from Chicago. Yes. Same. Yes. That's my same life. Yeah. They say I'm an Indian animal. Yeah. And I'm like, no, I'm not. Because yeah. I grew up here. I spent my summers here. Yeah. My whole family lives here. I don't have no family in Indiana. They say because you didn't go through CPS, you ain't yep. from Chicago. Yep, you're a fucking Indian animal or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, no, like I actually spent my time split in half. All mm-hmm. my friends was out here. Literally, I was out here. My mom drove the CTA bus for 12 years. Okay. So I was studying in Chicago. So when I'd be like, oh, I'm from Chicago, they'd be like, no, the fuck you not. So you claim Chicago, and that's why y'all have those conversations. Yep. I don't claim Chicago. Chicago's a great place. It's probably the best city in the world. Well, yes. in America. I don't know about the world. Yes. Best city in America. But I really enjoy, like, my childhood growing up both places, but majority of my life was in Indiana. Like, I didn't spend summers, but I spent a lot of weekends just yeah. going back and forth. Yeah. Like, I spent my summers, and I spent, like, my weekends in, in Chicago. My uh-huh. whole family live out here. My, dad, my stepdad live up north. Mm-hmm. So, like, in high school even, like, I would be – at school, Monday through Friday, Friday night, we going to Chicago. Okay. Because I'm taking dance class. Like, I was always out here. I claim Chicago because I don't like Indiana. Okay. Like, <laughs> I like, I appreciate Indiana as an adult. Uh-huh. Um, as a kid, I was like, fuck this place. Yeah. It was a lot of, Indiana wasn't, in Hammond, it wasn't as black as it is now. Okay. It was a little more white coming okay. up. And so I had a lot of, like, racial experiences growing up. Okay. Let's talk about that. Because I don't know that part of him. I came when it was black and Hispanic. Okay. Yeah. It wasn't like that. Ever. Okay. Like, I feel like Hammond is, has always been, like, a, a diverse part of the region. Uh-huh. Um, but particularly in, like, the little Hustville area. Because, like, I live across the street from Morton. Okay. So, it was white people. And, like, I would, like, be walking down the street and, like, white men in a van, like, call me a nigger going down the street. Really? Yes. Um. Like weird racial shit. I ain't had no black teachers. I went to an elementary school called Caldwell, okay. which is now Hesville Park. Okay. Um, it's just a lot of white kids. So, what do you? So, were you able to just watch and see it change to be more diverse? Yeah. And so, as you as it became more diverse, did you experience less racism? Yes, but uh-huh. then it shifted. It was like then, like instead of white kids making fun of me, then it was Mexican kids. Okay. That's what it turned into. So, <clears throat> how was it? Like, how did you get into dance? Who or what brought you into dance? Um, I have always had wanted to be a dancer since I was a kid. Mm-hmm. Like, my mom bought the Michael Jackson number ones DVD. Okay. And I would like study all his dance moves mm-hmm. and I'd be dancing. But I'm, I've always been shy growing up. And so, coming into high school, the, they had auditions at the Hammett Academy for the Performing Arts. Mm-hmm. I got in, and then my dad was like, let's take it seriously. Mm-hmm. So I was doing that, and then I was taking classes at a professional dance company here in Chicago called the Joel Hall Dancers and Center. Okay. Um, and I just did that. Um, I started dancing at 15, which is considered late in the yeah. dance world. Um, did ballet. I was a junior lovable. What's that? Uh, I was a, a Bulls cheerleader. Okay. Yeah, a junior Bulls cheerleader. I didn't okay. get paid. But yeah. Oh, uh, what did you like? Did you want to be a professional dancer when you were younger? Yeah, I still do. You still do? I still do. I still dance. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. And what is your like concentration with dance? Because I only I've only really seen you do like ballet. Yeah. Um. I consider myself a jazz dancer. Okay. So jazz is like um, origins of like street dance, but it's really like ballet mixed with like a little bit of like hip hop. If that makes any sense. Would you say that? There's a space in today's time for jazz. Jazz is a dying dance form, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, dance world is interesting right now. It's why, very interesting. Why do you say that? Uh, because I feel like 
the dancers in this time in 2023 are straying away from more disciplined forms of dance okay. and going to more like free form dance, like yeah. contemporary yeah. and modern. Yeah. You see a lot of people doing more modern dance now and they're like straying away from like the disciplines of ballet. Do you have a gripe with that or you're fine with that? I have a gripe. Okay. I'm a traditionalist. <laughs> I'm a traditionalist. Um, <laughs> I, a lot of my clients are dancers uh-huh. and um, they're contemporary dancers. I'm always like, you want to go just take a ballet class? And they're like, no. I'm like, what's wrong with you bitches? Like, <laughs> let's, you know, what's, I get it. Ballet is toxic. It's a lot of toxicity in that world, uh-huh. um, especially if you're a dancer of color. Uh-huh. But I'm a traditionalist. I'm like, you know, you got to have good form. You got to have good lines. You got to know how to do a time, do a plie. Like you should always go back to the basics. Okay. They say ballet is at the, ballet is like the core of all dance. Okay. No matter what form of dance you do, ballet is at the center of it all. Dance reminds me of like college and people's critique of college that go to college and like, I'm here to be an accountant. Why I got to take art class? Like, mm. I want to. I want to crump. Why the fuck I got to? <laughs> why the fuck I got to do ballet? <laughs> <laughs> yes, all the hip hop dancers and yeah. shit that go to school for dance and they yeah. be like, oh, I'm in a ballet class. Yeah, that's how it is. You got to take ballet. I'm, I'm sorry. I never understood like how ballet dancers can like be on their toes, toes like that. Cause I got extreme level of <laughs> flat feet. That would kill me if I ever tried to do that. You can't be flat foot. Yeah, I mean. I guess you're on your toe. There's like, there's like padding there. Oh, okay. So like, you're not, you're on your toe and you do feel it, but it's not that bad. Okay. It's not that bad to be in a point shoe. Uh, did dancing ever like fuck up the appearance of your feet? Yeah. I, I'll take my shoe off and show you. I'm good. <laughs> Cause I saw a TikTok video <laughs> and she said she was a dancer. Her feet was so like, yeah. she, it was a lot of fucking feet on there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have hammer toes. Yeah. My toes, um, people have said it looks like a hamburger helper hand. Okay. Some people told me my hands look like uh, hot dogs when you boil them too long. Okay. So, yeah, uh, monkey toes. Okay. Yeah. So, were you ever insecure about your feet? Yes. Large, which is a large reason why I'm a nail tech today. A large reason. Yes. Okay. I'm still insecure about my feet. I keep them up, though. Uh-huh. Uh, I get $120 pedicures. Uh-huh. I keep them up. I do my best, but <laughs> yes, very insecure. Okay, were you insecure to the point where, like, whenever it's time, like, say you go to the beach, uh-huh. would you wear socks to the beach? Yeah, I'm not wearing no socks <laughs> to no beach, you yeah. know. Um, but yeah, like, I hate, I used to hate wearing open toe shoes, but now uh-huh. I'm like, fuck you, I'm wearing these open toe shoes. <laughs> my feet look like squares. I don't fucking care. I'm wearing these open toe shoes. That's funny. Uh, okay. All right, back to growing up. Now, uh-huh. you're. You say your mom dro- uh, drove uh, the CTA c- city buses. Yep. Uh, how do you even get one of them damn jobs? I feel like that's that's a job that's hard to get. It is a job that's hard to get. Um, she got her CDL. Oh. She took like a basics test. That's and, what you got to get to get that. Yeah, you okay. definitely got to have a CDL. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it was like a long onboarding process, but she got that job, and she did that job before the existence of like smartphones and mm-hmm. shit like that. So like, she has the craziest stories. Uh, about like about driving and like cussing people out and like leaving kids at the bus stop and her bus getting shot at like okay. she has the craziest stories uh how was it like was she like as available with having that schedule of driving like as a parent yeah yeah no <laughs> okay no. yeah i didn't no. think so so i'm an only child uh-huh. so yeah my mom would be driving that bus and i would either be out here with one of her friends or my auntie my grandma whoever mm-hmm. or i'd be in indiana at home i was always at home by myself did you like pretty much raise yourself yes and no okay when she got sick yes so she got sick when i was 13 i think i was in the sixth or seventh grade uh-huh uh, so when she got sick, she spent a lot of time in the hospital, mm-hmm. um, like for weeks on end, and I would be at home by myself. So, so what was she diagnosed with? Like, what was she sick from? Lupus. Ooh, okay. She has lupus. She has fibromyalgia. She got a whole bunch of shit. <laughs> okay. My mama got a lot of ailments. Uh, so, uh, and you said when you were 13. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. Stuff <sighs> and uh, with you, because black people got this thing where they think that kids can watch themselves. Yeah, at 12, 11, 10, yeah. 13, like 
<laughs> so I'm sure you was probably already used to watching yourself at that age and then 13 come and now you just really just by really yourself. By myself. Uh-huh. Like, and I was, I'm responsible. Like my mom always like preached responsibility to me and stuff. So uh-huh. like I never did anything too crazy. Uh-huh. A little bit. When she be at work, yeah, I'd be doing crazy stuff. <laughs> okay. But, but if she was in the hot, when she got sick later in life, and she'd be in the hospital, I'd be like, no, nah, I'm going home. I'm not having no people in the house. Uh-huh. Like, I'm going to save a lot, get these ramen noodles, and chill for the rest of the day. But she'd be at work, yeah, I had people in and out the house. How did your mom, like, was it when she went to the hospital, that's when she learned she had lupus or she was already experiencing like sickness and she was like, I need to go to the hospital now. She was still working for the CTA. Okay. And she would come home and she would like fall out. Uh-huh. She would be like, have me a bath run in with Epsom salt uh-huh. and like leave me alone for the rest of the day. Uh-huh. So she knew something was wrong with her. Yeah. Um, and then she got her lupus diagnosis in 2011. Okay. And she tried to continue to drive the bus, but like she progressively got worse and worse and she had to quit. Uh-huh. Um, like, she was sneaking in a cane onto the bus. Like, she couldn't even walk no more. Yeah. So, it progressively got worse. And then, you know, she got, she was unemployed. And then that's when she would start being in the hospital a lot. How do you all financially uh, weather that storm? Like, how did you, if she don't have a job, you 13, how y'all make it, make it through that? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> my mom, we've always had a little bit of financial strife. And my mom's been very um, transparent about, having to borrow money or take out loans or get a, something from the credit union or even doing things for other people. She's been very transparent about those things. She's not ashamed. That's good. When she got sick, this is when my stepdad was entering my life. Okay. Um, and so he paid out of pocket for like her medication and stuff like that. She wasn't approved for like any Medicaid, Medicare. Mm-hmm. So like all of her medicines and stuff would be like 500 to $700. Yeah. Um, we ain't had no money. We definitely didn't have Did no she money. meet him prior to her diagnosis? No. Oh, so she was dating while she was sick? Yep. Because I know you regain, like, strength, and then it hits you just out of nowhere. Yeah, it's yeah. a one and off thing. Yeah. Um, Hers is, like, a little more on and off. Like, I have friends, like, my best friend, her mom has lupus, but, like, it barely affects her. Yeah. My mom's lupus is, like, an everyday thing, uh, and she'll be like, oh, I'm in pain, and then she'll take medicine, and she'll be, like, standing up, doing something, and then, like, she'll be in pain again. So it, it's... It's on and off. Yeah. Yeah. Lupus is one of those uh, things that I'm just terrified of. Yeah. It's a girl on TikTok that has like a nice platform and she's, yeah. you, you know, you probably know who I'm talking about. I think I've Light seen skin. her. Yeah. 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 So watching her, I'm like, oh my gosh. It's tough. It could take you out too. It's fatal. Yeah. And so when I was growing up and my mom was like, yeah, I got lupus. I was like, what is that? And I Googled it and all I saw was fatal. And I was like, Fuck. Mm-hmm. Like, it was like my worst nightmare was coming true. I was like, my mom going to die. Yeah. Where am I going to go? She's still here. Yeah, she's yeah. still here. <laughs> she, yeah. She's still see her. I'm, I'm going to go see her after this. Okay. <laughs> uh, where is your father in all of this? Your biological father? <laughs> <laughs> don't start, Lila. <Leela. laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I've heard many things. Um, I don't know. I don't know where that nigga was. Okay. Apparently now he's on drugs, from what I hear. But he's from Chicago. Yep, and he claimed he act like he a Chicago legend. Oh, okay. Yeah, he be acting like it. And oh, he used to be like a groupie for like Chief Keef. A groupie for Chief Keef? Yeah. So, Chief Keef's young though. Like he's <sighs> us. Yeah. How that's is that possible? Nigga. Yes. Love Sosa was filmed at my biological dad's house. Really? Yes. Um, I guess the dude that used to manage Chief Keith, his name is Uncle Ro. Okay. Okay. So apparently I'm related to them. That's my dad's cousin. Okay. And so Chief Chief Keith and like the GBE Glory Boys, like they would use his house for all types of stuff. So you a you a part of Chicago history, uh, <laughs> kind of sorta, kind of sorta. Sort of. I used to flex like, yeah, my dad worked with Chief Keith. I would too. I would, I would, they Low Sosa was shot at your daddy crib. Yes. That is something I'm a forever keep saying to yeah. people. It's a dog in the video, and yeah. that was my dad's dog. His name was Neo. Okay, yeah. Now I gotta go watch this video. Go man. watch it. <laughs> gotta spot the dog because yeah. I don't remember no dog in the. Uh, it's in a dog the video. In the, it's very brief. 
It's okay. very brief. But yeah, my 16th birthday, he had like all of the glory boys like FaceTime me and send me videos wishing me happy birthday. Because I guess them niggas would just be at his house. Okay. So like Fredo Santana, uh-huh. a couple of other people, and Chief Keef. I okay. remember Chief Keef. Would you, so with him saying that he says he's a Chicago legend, I mean, he he probably, it might kind of have some truth to it. Back in our people day, well, not, not our people. But, but their the fuck, day. His, no, our mom's people day. Okay. Like in the 90s, he's like, oh, they call me Chi-Town TD. Okay. So... Well, I'm even scared to be saying this on camera. I mean, it, it, we ain't said nothing too too bad. We ain't said nothing bad. We ain't said nothing bad. Know, he he. People don't like him. Don't come looking for me. Uh-huh. Don't come looking for me because you don't like him. Okay. He he burned bridges with niggas. So he's he was never really in your life. No. Yeah. I could count on like one hand how many times I've seen this nigga. He just takes my pictures off Facebook and be, and be like, <laughs> "Look, look, my daughter graduated. Yeah, the nigga was not he won it all. Okay. Yeah, yeah. that's my." That's my uh, sperm donor as well. Yeah, that's what I call them, sperm, sperm donor. donor. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. And I got, I learned the other day that I, I'm maybe one of 15 siblings. So me and my sisters, we was all on the phone the other day. We like, yeah, we got to find the other siblings and shit. Uh-huh. It's, it's wild. It's a lot of speculation going on right now with him. Yeah, it's nine of us. Nine? Yeah. Yeah. I'm the oldest. Suppo- well, kind of, sort of. The oldest or nine? Kind of, sort of. Okay. <laughs> I'm, supp- I'm biologically the oldest. Okay. Maybe. It might be someone older. Maybe. We, we don't know. <laughs> I relate. I relate. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, so how did your mom, like, explain to you, your dad's alive. He's here. He's just, he just not choosing to be in your life. Like, how did that get explained to you why you don't have a father in your life? She'd always be like, fuck that nigga. Oh, okay. She'd okay. be like, <laughs> okay. he's not here. He left me and you. Uh-huh. Fuck that nigga. I'm your mom and your dad. Okay. That was her. Okay. She'd be like, it's me and you against the world. Okay. Now, are you one of those ones when it's Father's Day, you like, so the mothers be like, I was a mother and a daddy. People be like, yeah, mama. Yep. yep. And fuck everybody who got something to say about it. Okay. They'd be like, respect black fathers. Yes, yeah. respect black fathers, but some of us don't got that shit. So, yeah, my mom was my daddy and my mom. Uh, she roughed me up like a dad. Like, she had to be a dad. Uh-huh. Um, but I also give respect to the male figures in my life, too. Yeah. She had a lot of, like, male friends that would come around and, like, they would equally help raise me. So, I give respect to them, too. And my stepdad, I give respect to him because he definitely played a large. He is still playing a large part in my okay. life. Shout out to the stepdads. Shout out to the stepdads. Uh, how did you all come to a relationship? Like, did you already like him when his when your mom was like, "Hey, this is my friend." Yeah, I like that nigga. Yeah, um, he was cool, and I'm not gonna hold you. Like, he used to take my mom out, and I would go with, and we'd be at Olive Garden, and I could order whatever I want, and I was okay. like, "Yeah, this is nice. Right this is here. nice. This is nice. Okay, super cool." He'd be like. I used to cut my t-shirts up because I wanted crop tops. My mom, we didn't have no money for her to like buy clothes and stuff like that. Yeah. And he came up to me. He was like, why are you cutting up your shirts? He was like, i will take you shopping and get you some real crop tops. I said, Aww. fucking period. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> so he always, till this day, as a 25-year-old woman, is always looking out. Okay. So. Question. Because <clears throat> it was this uh, post that I actually uh, commented on on Facebook. And buddy, it was a girl on TikTok that said that eighty per eighty eight percent of men would not be able to survive without a uh, woman. And so we were commenting on it. And then I did some research to just try to, you know, obviously eighty eight percent is wild to say, but I did some research to try to figure out the unemployment rate between men and women, and then specifically black women and black women. Mm-hmm. And you know, it says that forty six percent of the reported legally employed people in twenty twenty two were women. 46%. Technically 47 if you go to the to the or whole unemployed number. Unemployed or employed? Employed. Okay. So out of the all lo- legally reported employed people, 47% of them were women. Okay. Right? And it said 12.6% of that whole population of employed were black. Okay. 77% was white. Okay. So you got the 46 that's just women. Okay. 77% white, 12% that's black. Yeah. When you go down to like black women, black men out of the 12%, it's, it's probably almost even 50% okay. Okay. employed, right? So with you growing up with a, a, a stepfather that came into your life, would you say that he like helped alleviate um, some of the like stressors that your mom probably had? 
Definitely. Okay, so you can be able to speak to how a partnership is important. Yeah. And do you think your mom would have been able to... Well, your case is a little different because your mom actually, like, had hindrance, physical hindrance from her ability to be a mother or just a mom in a home. Yeah. But would you say that it probably is hard, like, easier to do so, be a mom, be present and be a functional mom in a household if you have the father carry more of, like, the the work and the financial uh, stress in the home? I do think that um, to an extent, you know, like, Having my stepdad around to kind of carry that financial aspect uh-huh. was important. It was uh-huh. very important. That's how we got the basic necessities that we needed. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, my mother is super resourceful. Yeah. Extremely. So even when she was on her back lying down, like she was still making money. She wrote books. She sold them on Amazon. She wrote seven books, I think. Mm-hmm. She wrote seven books. My mom had a knitting business. She made thousands of dollars selling pussy hats. Uh, pussy hats pussy hats you see all the little white women during uh donald trump they was wearing them little pink hats it's supposed to look like two labias at the top of your head okay look they call pussy hats okay she sold like two thousand of those and that's how she was able to pay for my graduation party and my prom okay she was out here hustling yeah my yeah. mom was a hustler yeah so she would be on her back sick having asthma attacks not being able to walk not being today she currently cannot eat and my mom is a hustler. She does she does um psychic readings. Okay. She has a hotline. She makes money that way. Yeah. So like she's still a hustler. Yeah. You know, and like I think even without my dad, we would have got by. Yeah. Um, but he definitely made it easy. He yeah. definitely made it easy. Um, and so with that being said, black women are resourceful as fuck. Resourceful as fuck. I yeah. feel like men are like simple minded. Yes. You know? Yes. You know, it's one track minded. My mom like, okay, this not working. Okay, what we finna do next? Yeah. I think that's a hard pill that men have to swallow is that you aren't as resourceful Mm. and creative as women. Yep. Because I agree. I My mama done did some shit, got some money, whatever. I ain't asking, you know, for the the tea or the deets on it, but like you just said the other day, oh, no Christmas. We wake up and this Christmas in yep. the fucking closet. Yeah. <clears throat> and so I'm with you. I really do think women just, they just have this in them where they just can figure out some shit out of nothing. And when you get to a dude, like, it's just, I got to go fucking kill somebody right. to do it. Like, <laughs> like it's no. crazy. Why? Wait, no, wait. Let's not do that. Chill <laughs> out. Yeah. Chill out. Men <laughs> panic. They panic. Yeah. Like, no, women are resourceful and they do it calm. Yeah. Um, and they just make shit work. Yeah. We think two, three steps ahead. Mm-hmm. That's how I feel. Um, sorry to all the male viewers. Yeah. You know, I'm sorry about that, but that's how I feel. They'll be okay. They, they'll be okay. They, they know my heart is still for them. It's just the, the, the facts is facts, bro. Cause even in statistics, we lead the way in entrepreneurship. Yes. We are, uh, like we we're more, there's more women, small business owners than men. I'm one. Entrepreneurship is on the rise because of women. Yep. So if we talking about women are more resourceful and more creative and they figure shit out, then why are we leading the way in entrepreneurship as well? Leading the way in education. Education is just, that's just going to always be the, I think. Like, yeah. hello, like y'all niggas. I saw some dude on TikTok. He was like, black men don't even have life insurance. <laughs> 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 we, we. We make shit work in the community. Mm-hmm. And um, the only time I agree with Dr. Umar is when he'd be like, you know, black women, we are at the forefront of our community. We are at yeah. the forefront of activism. Yeah. So we can't succeed as a community without a black woman being there. Yeah. Now, I always try to use that and be like, why haven't, why aren't there more women presidents, more women bosses and stuff? If we know that women are the ones that get the shit done. Yeah. It is like they always come behind and say women can't lead or mm-hmm. they, it's too much cattiness. Women they're, are too emotional. Yeah, too emotional. Yeah. I hate that. No, that's like that. We just we're just able to fluently just talk about our emotions. Yeah. And you all have been conditioned to not. And so you got a lot of fucking deconditioning to do right. to realize you're just as emotional. Maybe we need to lead a country in an emotional sense, though. Yeah, because then you would understand why you shouldn't go bomb. Gaza, like it's crazy. Yeah. Send millions of dollars, yeah, to a country, yeah, to use that money to create genocide on a group of people, yeah. Maybe we need to have an emotional sense, yes. 
Yes. The fuck is wrong with being emotional? Exactly. That's the problem. That's the problem. <laughs> That's the problem. Y'all niggas don't want to be emotional. Uh-huh. That's why you're shooting up schools and you're shooting up concerts because y'all not thinking about your emotions. And the stats will show. It, it, it's little 90% of all uh, murders that's happened in the entire globe were committed by male perpetrators. Yep. Yep. You don't see no bitch out here shooting up schools. Well, maybe a couple. But it's a couple. It's, it's not majority. Right. It's not and majority. the couple is like 5% out of the right. 95. Right. So it's, it's clearly there's something out there within men. Yep. That we need to evaluate and figure out how to fix this. Yeah. It was a man that tried to take down the plane uh-huh. on Alaska Airlines the other day. It was a man that shot 60 people in Lewiston, Maine. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, y'all need to get that shit checked out. Yeah. Go see a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, just because Jay or Jonesy is not here, I just feel like... <laughs> <laughs> we need you need a man up in here to sit you on straight. It'll be an interesting conversation with him here. <laughs> uh so I actually was watching this TV show. It's new. Uh I wanna say it's on Fox or NBC. And it's called The Irrational. And um is is I would say it's black lit. The main two of the main characters are black, but the way that the show is, you don't focus on their race, which is what I like the most. Um, okay. and so it was a quote in the movie. It's basically he is a professor. And he's a professor of like social science, uh, okay. psychology, and he helps uh, solves crime because he studied like b- uh, human behaviors. Okay, <clears throat> and so he had a quote at the in the first uh, episode where he said, "We repeatedly and predictably make the wrong decisions in many aspects of our lives, and research could help change these patterns." Yeah, and so. I love the show because that is my whole spiel with life in general. Like I had a conversation with Shania and we had to talk about like the difference between me and my siblings. Okay. And we all grew up in the same household. We all grew up different traumas, but we have extreme traumas from our childhood. Okay. Why did I turn out differently than my other two sisters? Yeah. Right. And the difference that I came up with is that I thought out, my decision making before just making a decision based off of instincts. Okay. One of the things that they said in the show is that uh, humans commit many decisions based off of instincts instead of rationale. And so that's why the show is called irrational. So I wanted to ask you, uh, what is your take on how, uh, the, if, if you believe that humans make more decisions based off of instincts versus rational decision making and then two if there is some way for us to predict the outcomes of things today with so much stuff has already transpired with people have committed that same decision already like Mm. if you're like if you got pregnant at 16 and we know so many people that got pregnant at 16 do you what makes your situation different than their situation Mm. It's a deep question. <laughs> I know. I don't know. This damn near kind of goes to like nature versus nurture almost. Uh-huh. I don't know. Okay. So, okay, wait, 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 wait. Layman's terms. Okay. You're asking, do I make decisions based on instinct, instinct or rationale? rationale? Majority of your decisions, because clearly we don't make it this, you know, both of them just all the time. I'm a rationalizer. Okay. Um, I like to think things through with logic. Okay. That's just how I see things. I don't get a logicalness. Okay. So me, rational. Like, okay. I'm going to rationalize the situation. I'm going to be like, okay, this is what's happening. What would be the best thing to do mm-hmm. without my emotions involved? Okay. Yeah. So with you saying that that's what you tend to do, do you think that your you doing so has helped you garner the success that you've had so far in life? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Do you think that if you would have made more instinctual, I think that's a word, instinctual decisions, your life probably would have not have the same amount of success or it would have just looked differently? I think it would look different. Okay. Um, if I did things based on instinct. Yeah. I don't think I'd be well received. Okay. I think I wouldn't be well liked. Okay. <laughs> because I probably would have fumbled 
things with my mouth. Okay. And with my behavior. Yeah. Yeah, because my instinct sometimes is like, fight. <laughs> that, that is a lot of people's, does 90% of men committed, you know, <laughs> murders. Oh, fight that bitch. <laughs> Killer. Yeah. yeah. Instinct, yes. Um, But no, because I'm able to be like, wait, bitch, stop. Take a pause. Uh-huh. If you do this, you're going to, this and this, these are the consequences. Yeah. So, yeah, yes, I'm a rationalizer. I try to think things through. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I do think I have a lot of success. Even when I want to fucking lose my shit. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. Do you, if you were to have kids today, would you, okay, let's, when you have kids. (laughs) Today? Today? (laughs) When you have kids. (laughs) Whenever you have kids, would you try to instill them to make more rational decisions or, to just go with the flow. Because I think that's that's what people say a lot of times is just go with the flow. I would encourage them to try and utilize both. Okay. Because I do think to a certain extent being too logical about situations, you can miss out on things too. Uh-huh. Um, I would encourage my kids to use their discernment, okay. basically. Yeah. Decide whether... Like, depending on the situation, okay, maybe you should take a more logical stance if mm-hmm. it's more severe. And if it's something more not as severe, something kind of basic, then you should go with the flow because you can find things and discover things about yourself Yeah, in the midst of going with the flow, if that makes sense. Do you think that people are God's chosen people? God's chosen people. So... Just, just to use myself as an example, because you don't have siblings, I'm clearly different than my two, my other two sisters, mm-hmm. and a lot of them would say that I am successful. Was I chosen to be this out of you all, or was this my own doing? Because some people think that you know you're you you my you you special Maya, you're just different than everybody else. Yeah. Okay, I think, I think your spirit, okay, oh Lord, oh Lord, (laughs) okay, God's chosen people is interesting for me because I come from the belief that before you were here, before you do earth school, okay, earth school, earth school, okay, before you do earth school, you choose the people that's going to be in your family, okay, choose the people that's going to be in your circle, and we all choose our own personalities. When you say you, because before we're thought of, our parents have to have us, so they chose. But your spirit, okay, your spirit. Oh, okay. So your your own spirit chooses yes. that. Okay. Yes. So the, are you saying like things are predetermined? Yes. Okay. And no. Okay. Yes and no. Okay. I think you choose. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Everybody going to think I'm a fucking loony. <laughs> You're fine. <laughs> they going to think I'm a loony. Get this loony spiritual bitch off of here. Nah, uh, you fine. We need some spirituality talks up on the pod. Oh, Lord. Um, yeah, I think I think a lot of things are predetermined, mm-hmm. and then some things aren't because you're on your own path, but other people are on their own path, and sometimes paths collide, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. Okay. Now, I never, I grew up in a church home. All right. I never got into, you know, the culture there of like, just believe in God. God will make a way. Um, I never got into that because I always thought that you had to put in all the work possible to have your life be what you want it to be. Yeah. And not just believe that what is for you is for you. What's not for you. Like all of that stuff people say, yeah, I get it. That's probably how you felt. But me, like I just always been sure of myself and Mm -hmm. like this decision that I'm making is the best decision possible or probably not. And I just want to do it or I'm not supposed to do it. Like I, everything is yourself. What the fuck you do. Yeah. So what growing up and having two other siblings choose to do stuff that I didn't do. And then the outcome is this. I'm like, maybe it's because you should have did it this way, but you also don't want to tell people you should live your life a certain way. Yeah. But when we talk about success, what is success to, what is success to you? Everybody know what failure is, but what is success to you? Success. Success is doing. Hmm. 
<laughs> Kenny, you hard, huh? <laughs> oh, man, you some questions. I mean, I knew they was going to be like this, but Lord. Uh, success to me is you walking in your path and you being happy at what you do. Okay, okay. That's what success is. Okay. You could be a successful bank robber. You could be a successful nail technician. You could be a successful podcaster. Mm -hmm. um, to me, success is you going down a direction and you having a positive outcome in the direction in which you're going. With that di definition, do you think that people should be able to cho pick and choose who they think is successful if success is what you're happy with? No, because success, success is biased. Uh -huh. um, it's subjective. Okay. And so, no, you can't tell me what the fuck is successful because what may work for me may not work for you. Yeah. So people have to do what works for them. Yeah. And if it works for you, then that's your success. Yeah. What works for me and I'm getting positive outcomes and results yeah. is success to me. Okay. Uh, do, you, do you think that uh, where you are right now in your life, if you were to pass away, knock on wood, you would be okay with all the success you've garnered for yourself or you would feel like I need, I wish I would have done more. That's such a hard question mm -hmm. because I'm a Capricorn mm -hmm. and um, I'm always looking for the next thing. Yeah. I'm always, I have imposter syndrome real fucking bad uh -huh. um, to the point where my friends and the people around me have to be like, Layla, you own a business. You make your own money. You don't mm -hmm. answer to anybody. You drive a nice car. You have this. You have that. And I'm like, bitch, no. Yeah. Like, that's not enough for me. Yeah. If I died today, would I be happy with what I've done? Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> yes and no. Okay. Why the no? I want more. Okay. I feel like 25-year-old Layla has only got to dabble in professional dance, go to school, you know, go to film school, do little film things, and create a business at 23. Mm -hmm. But I have so many other goals. Mm -hmm. I have so many other goals and things I want to do, and um, I want to educate people, and I want to talk to people and inspire other people who come out of rough situations to make a way out of no way. Mm -hmm. And so if I went out today, I'd be like, fuck. Like, I still have some things to say, um, and I still have some things to teach. That's how I would feel. So why yes? Yes, because I have done a lot okay. for a 25-year-old. Not yeah. many 25-year-olds can say. Name it. Name them all. Let's get to it. Oh, I'm so bad at giving myself credit. No, nope. yeah, <laughs> this is our time right now. Let's name it. What's, what, what's you've, what have you done as a 25-year-old that you know a large percent of the world has not accomplished? I have a degree. Okay. I have a degree. That is true. Uh, so I finished college. I finished high school. A lot of niggas ain't do that. And that's uh -huh. okay. That's okay. No uh -huh. shade. Uh, I bought a car. Okay. On your own? I negotiated that motherfucker on my own. That was okay. hard. That's a, that, that was is, hard. To be able to speak for yourself and make those decisions, yeah. that's, that's, yeah. something, that's something. Yeah, I got the car I wanted. Okay. Um, That's small, though. That's small shit. The biggest thing, I became a business owner. Okay. I'm a six. I feel like I'm a successful. Ooh, this is so hard. Do it. <laughs> I'm a successful nail technician. Okay. I am fully booked every single month. Yeah. Thank God. I have an inviting space where my clients come and they feel appreciated and they feel loved. And we have friendships and bonds mm -hmm. outside of the manicure table. I'm a brand ambassador for a big nail company okay. uh, called Valentino Beauty Pier. Okay. One of the biggest nail brands yeah. in the United States. Okay. I work for them. Um, that's a big fucking deal in a yeah. nail world. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have a platform of, it's not a lot. What? It's over 10K. Okay. That is, that, <laughs> how many people don't have 10K? What is it on TikTok? What do you mean? For Instagram? I have 12.7K on both Instagram and TikTok. That is that is great. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm, I, the biggest thing for me is I'm fully booked. Yeah. There's nail techs out here that is, like, struggling. Yeah. You know, people became nail techs and they have a hard time getting income. Yeah. I'm fully booked. I don't That's have to great. worry about it. That's great. Do your thing. Like, yeah. Keep, keep going, man. Yeah. Because... Same sentiments. It's a lot of motherfuckers that's 25 that has never and might not even get to this 
before they die of yeah. the stuff that we've done just at 25. Yeah. So you should always keep clapping hard for yourself because I have that it, weird insecurity where I care about how much a lot, my light shine over people that's in my circle. Yeah. <clears throat> me too. Yeah. Me too. The exact same thing. I feel like sometimes I'll be like, let me yeah. dim myself a little yeah. bit. Um, and I know the people around me, like in my family, like feel that way. Like, and I'm like, no, I want all of us to shine. Yeah. I don't want to be the the one person that's like yeah. the best. No, I don't I don't that it makes me insecure. Yeah. I want everybody to eat. I want everybody to come up. And when I get in a position to bring people up, I'm gonna bring everybody I love up with me. Yeah. I don't even like people that say that they want to be above others. Like it's, it's cool weird. to wanna be, you know, wanna be the best boxer of all time. That's yeah. cool. But what's the best version of yourself? Right. Did you accomplish that part? Because you could be the best NBA player of all time, but did you play at your best ability? Because I personally did not play at my best ability every game, and I know I didn't. Right. And I'm not proud of that. Right. And it's always going to be somebody better than you. Yeah. It's always And, like, I look at nail technicians that's 10 times better than me, and I would be like, oh, hell. Like, yeah. The fuck? Like, I don't want to be the best nail technician. Yeah. I want to always have people better than me so I know where I want to get to. Uh -huh. If you're the best, how do you learn? Yeah. You don't get to learn. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you for sharing your accomplishments because uh, yeah. we need to have spaces to be able to do that. Cause that was hard. I, I bet it was. was hard. It's hard for me I'm to do still that. uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> my, uh, my boss, she specifically asked me, like, how do you want to be celebrated? Because she know I'm weird about it. Like, it's a work in progress in right. my life to get past that weird shit. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I had asked you about oh irrational decisions so yeah ba back to that before we close out on that um segment do you think that there are like for sure stuff to not do in life uh so that you can be on a better track to be successful like obviously you shouldn't kill people or you shouldn't you know that but like just life decisions like should I get pregnant when I'm 16? I'm just using that as an example but that's the first thing in my mind should I get pregnant at 16 can I still try to be successful in life or what are some things that you feel like you just should not do if you want to be successful? You should not compare yourself. Okay. You should not compare yourself. Everything else is kind of like, you know, you, you got to find out. But I do think a large part of why people aren't successful is because they're constantly, and let me go ahead and give myself the same advice. Uh -huh. We're constantly comparing ourselves to the success of other people. And you can't do that because, again, everybody's success looks different. Yeah. And so if you want to be a successful person, you got to, like, you got to have tunnel vision. Yeah. You got to have tunnel vision completely. Do not compare yourself to other people because they have you out here fucked up. Uh -huh. Just because little Sally is doing it like this. Yeah. Don't mean that's how you're supposed to do it. Yeah. It may not work out for you. Yeah. It worked out for little Sally, though. I was actually watching an interview with Pretty V yesterday, and she had said that what – is you is you and no one else can be how you are so like how you do your nails is how you do your nails and nobody you could try to teach people how to do it like you but they have their own aesthetic in their own way and so right. they got to figure that out right um kind of like on the topic of pretty v like everybody got their own comedy mm -hmm. and so like who is that bobby althoff and funny marco mm -hmm. like they have a similar dry humor brand. Yeah. And some people don't find it funny, but they're successful at it. Yeah. And then you have like the Drewskis and you have like DC Youngfly, you have M Pretty V and B Simone, like they all have their own like comedy lane. Yeah. And it's successful for them. Yeah. Um, but just because Funny Marco is doing this type of style don't mean I'm going to do it and be successful at it. It's yeah. not my lane. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. All right. Now, I do want all the viewers and listeners that's tuned into this to this episode to go look up the difference between instinct and rational decision making because that's very extremely important in like the outcome of the decisions that you make am i just fucking this girl to get a nut off or am i not thinking about the 18 months that i'm gonna have i'm in the 18 years i'm about to stick it through with this girl at the minimum exactly you know exactly yeah so with you being a nail tech was that something like, was that an adult pivot that you chose to make? Or did you like really already have aspirations to want to be on nail tech before doing that? Nope. I'm here by accident. Okay. Explain. Okay. 
You want the long story? The short story. The short story. <laughs> yeah. The short story is no. I was not trying to be a fucking nail tech. Yeah. In fact, I looked down on that job. Mm. I looked down on that job. Mm. Um, I was only doing my nails because they were growing out and the salons were closed. I'm what you call a pandemic nail tech. Okay. Um, and I despise that. But I started doing nails in a pandemic like everybody else and their mom. Yeah. Um, so it was out of necessity doing my nails. I just so happened to get good at it. And then people were like, are you going to go to school? And I'm like, no. I'm in film school. I'm trying to be a dancer. How am I going to be a professional dancer and be a documentary filmmaker? It's just yeah. not going to happen. Yeah. Um, and then I fucked somebody up that somebody was my grandma. <laughs> <laughs> I fucked her up real bad. And I was like, oh, okay. So I'm going to go to nail school. Yeah. So I went to the shittiest nail school. It's called Trans Beauty Academy. Do not go there. <laughs> Do not go there. If yeah. you were in the Chicago area, don't go. Um, I went to that nail school. Yeah. Clocked in every day. I did nail school by day, film school by night. And I just got it done. I got my degree and my nail tech license in the same month. Okay. Yeah. It was by accident. It, and it was a scary thing because my, even my, my stepdad was like, this is not your dream. Yeah. This is not what you want to do. And he's Asian. He's Filipino and Chinese. And so, like, I guess stereotypically, but, like, he was like, don't let this distract you from your real dreams. And it be, ended up becoming a dream. Yeah. You know? So... Yeah, no, I'm here by accident. Yeah, I hate the plan A, plan B motherfuckers. Like, when you a real adult, bro, you got to have multiple plans because you might think this is what you want and you learn right. yourself more. This is not what you want. Right. I'd be a broke bitch if I was out here trying to make a film. Yeah. And I do want to do that. Like, yeah. that's something I still aspire to do. Yeah. But I can do that and have money. Yeah. I have money. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's not a lot of film opportunities here in Chicago, especially for documentary for what I want to do. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, no, I'd rather not be a, sh a starving artist, you know. So I'm out here doing nails and being successful at it. It's working for me right now. And when it stops working for me, then I will pivot. Yeah. Now, with you being in the service industry, <laughs> what is your perspective on black professionalism? Oh, my God. <sighs> That's been a topic. We've uh -huh. been, I've been talking a lot about that, and it's a catch-22. Yeah. It's a catch-22, uh, especially as a nail tech, as a beauty pro. You know, people always on social media talking about these new nail techs and these new hairstylists yeah. and these braiders, these bitches, always talking shit, but it's a two-way street. Mm -hmm. It really is a two-way street because I understand the client perspective, and I also understand the small business perspective. Yeah. Of you have to make things work for you and people cross boundaries. Yeah. Uh, and I don't think the client is always right. That's how I feel. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that could kind of go into that restaurant conversation with Keith Lee exposing all the restaurants in Atlanta. Uh -huh. Granted, some of them places definitely need to be exposed because that how you not doing takeout? Gordon Ramsay, the he literally made a living off of Hill's uh, kitchen nightmares. Yeah. Like, he goes and goes to the dirtiest and fucked up ass places and reveals that this shit is fucked up. Yeah. And y'all eat there. You wouldn't want somebody to let y'all know that. Exactly. You want to get sick? Yeah. Like you should know. Yeah. So, but with professionalism, one of the things that we talk about a lot on the podcast, because the majority of us are entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. <clears throat> is... Uh, you, you go online, you always see black people just talk about how unprofessional black businesses can be or tend to be. Excuse me. And uh, I wanted to talk about just that idea of what is professionalism because I'm, I'm in the middle. I feel like professionalism is anti-black, right? It's based off of what white people has deemed to be professional, but they don't also stick to that standard. Like it's even having like a uh, table etiquette. Mm. We, we were given hands to eat with stuff. You all created utensils without utensils. We would have been eating with our hands. Mm. And so then you created this fake ideology of, you know, etiquette at a table. We became more civilized beings. Mm. So when you come to professionalism, it's just white people telling you, you know, Greek, people when they walk in mm -hmm. cool but what's wrong if i don't greet you when you walk in mm -hmm. <laughs> so what's your take on that 
Oh, that got real. You know, uh-huh. it got real uh, <laughs> radical right there. Yeah. As some would deem that. That's interesting. I like that. Okay. I like that. Does it does that make you look at black professionalism a little differently? Fuck no. Because <laughs> <laughs> cause some of that shit is yeah, it'd too be outrageous. Much. It'd be outrageous. It's outrageous. Yeah. It's outrageous. In the case of nail techs, why are you why are you not doing fill ins? Why are you not doing soak offs? In the case of braiders, why are you not washing hair? See that right there, I have I got a perspective for the braiders. They're okay. not licensed. They're, you don't have to be licensed to be a braider. Yes, you do. In the state of Illinois. Okay, in the state of Illinois. In cool. the state of Illinois, you need a license to be a braider. Are you, because, you know, we go to homes for our salons. We don't need to go to an actual, you know, establishment. Right. So are you talking about the ones that's in salons? What you mean? Like, because if you're in a salon, you have to have a. If you perform a service and get paid, you need a license. Mm-hmm. You need a license. If I braid hair, I need a license. If I perm hair, color hair, cut hair, I need a license. See, yeah, that right there. But braiding hair, that that right there, I just I just feel like that's so different than all the other ways to do hair. Braiding because you're in close proximity of the scalp. Mm-hmm. Um, you can fuck people up. Yeah. You can fuck people up if you braid too tight. Uh-huh. I have a personal experience. My auntie, she went to the African braiders. They braided her shit too tight. Mm-hmm. She said, take it out. They put braid spray on it, and they gave her a big open wound. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. And she was like mojo jojo in a circle in the middle of her head. Yeah. You could see her brain. Yeah. Okay. Like, you're fucking with people's scalps, and you could cause people permanent hair loss. Okay. You cause people alopecia. And so because of that... I think you absolutely need a license. Yeah. I'm a no shade, no tea to all the girls that do braids, that do locks, unlicensed out their crib. That's yeah. fine. We all start somewhere. Yeah. But I think in order for you to progress as a professional and to take your business to the next level, you need to have that license. I'm not against it. Everybody should go have a have a, a license for cosmetology. Absolutely. Yeah. Fucking with people, hair, you nails, you could people could literally lose toes. I think I was looking at it from the perspective of like dance and you just wanna do hip hop. Like, damn, I gotta learn all this other shit and cause braiding is a black thing. That's yeah. you're not going that's not yeah. 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 And in Illinois, you need a license. Okay. And you're supposed to wash hair. Okay. It's it's in the state board laws and rules. <laughs> 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 so wash hair. Okay. Okay. Uh, what about the style of communication that we have with our within our community? Because that could be anti-black if you tell a person to speak in a particular vernacular. Now that you're a business owner to your consumers, but what's wrong <laughs> with like? Okay, yeah, okay, it could be anti-black. But, like, what's wrong with being like, hello, my name is so-and-so, I want my nails done. How much would this cost? Like, what's wrong with that? They wanna, yo, what's up? I don't care if people hit me up with yo, just uh-huh. address me. Uh-huh. I don't, I know this might sound picky and people may not like it, but I hate when people go in my DMs and be like, how much for this? Uh-huh. Bitch, who are you? Yeah. Who are you? Like, yo, hey, what's up? I yeah. love your work. Or you ain't even got to say that. You ain't got to kiss my ass. What's up? Um... My name is this. I would like to get this done by you. What's uh-huh. wrong with that? Uh-huh. It's just being polite. It's just being polite. Be fucking polite. I'm a human being. And I'm not going to come up to you talking all type of way because I don't know you. So, yeah, just be polite. See, with professionalism, it has nothing to do with the consumers. It's all about the professional. So they can call and do whatever the fuck. Within your policies, but, like, actually greeting you before asking for a service done, they got to actually do that. They don't. You just got to always remain professional. I'm going to remain professional, but I work out of my house, right? Yeah. So, like, I have my salon is separate from the rest of my home. It's in my basement. I converted my basement fully into a salon. I vet everybody who come through there. You can't just go on my site and book a service with me. If I've never seen your name before, you're I'm sending your money back. You're going to delete it. Yeah. You have to talk to me. Yeah. And I want to inquire with you and get your energy first before you come into my space. As a business owner, I don't have to service you. Mm. Okay. All right. <sighs> black people black people we gotta figure out what uh being professional in our within our community is see i'm not like the other hoes like <laughs> my my clients love me they uh-huh. love me they be like this is a professional clean 
space. Layla's a professional. You can yeah. go through my Google reviews. Okay. Yeah. All right, Google reviews. Yeah, I got Google reviews. <laughs> like Sukiyana <laughs> said, I got reviews. Yes. Now, with you been on this couch here, and you don't have this full squad here to experience them, what has been your experience so far just during this shoot? Because I have a topic that I wanted to talk to you about, but I want to hold it until the next time we, we sit down with you. I'm glad I'll be here next time. Okay. I was really concerned that you won't like me. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to see, see what the viewers also think, too. But yeah, yeah. We, I have no doubt in me to be able to have a conversation with anybody. Okay. So now I want to see you with the entire team, too. This was fun. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've, I've tuned into the podcast in the past, and I see the interaction between everybody. And yeah. so I'm curious to see how it would be with Jonesy here and Shania. I love Shania to death. Yeah. I would be, yeah, that'd be cool. Okay. All right. So we also, uh, the last person that also wanted to be a personality, I asked him this question. I'm going to ask you if you, don't, if you don't have an answer, that's fine, but I'm going to ask you. What is something that you've seen or – picked up from how we podcast that you think that if we did it a different way, what do you, what, what is a weakness you think that our podcast has that we can improve on? I don't think y'all have a weakness. Okay. I don't, uh, I don't think y'all have a weakness. Okay. Well, if you do come up with one that as you I'll tell tune you. in more, definitely yeah. let me know. I'll tell you. Always want us to grow. Now, uh, one of the things I wanted to get off was to nerd all nerd with you about Michael Jackson. <laughs> we can start right here with my uh michael jackson tattoo okay? <laughs> i know you had that yeah <laughs> i, I have an Aaliyah tattoo all the way up here and okay. i got a michael jackson tattoo so now you 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 love him a little bit more than me i wouldn't put people i don't put people faces on my body yeah i'm so, wild so i would I'm, I'm just say you love it more than me you yeah, got me I'm, beat yeah i'm wild <laughs> i love him to death what is your all-time favorite top three MJ songs. Oh my God, that's so hard. Yep. Not top three. Top three. One, Heaven Can Wait. Heaven Can Wait. <sighs> A most underrated Michael Jackson yes, song it on is. the planet. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Oh, fuck. Top three. Yup. Oh my God, I hate this. I resent Heaven this. Heaven Can Wait is number one. Heaven Can Wait is number one. Okay. All right. Fuck, I resent this question. Top three. Yup. Okay. I might change my mind. Okay, I'll that's just put, fine. I'll just put it out there. Okay, Heaven Can Wait is number one. Number two, Stranger in Moscow. Okay, okay. Number three, fuck. It changes. My fate, oh my God. Okay, Lady in My Life. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. We, we connect with that. Lady of My Life is probably an under, like, it's one of those ones that, as you actually get to learn his catalog today, all right, this is one of the ones. But when I was younger and I learned that song, I was like, don't nobody talk about this song? This song is so great. Mm -hmm. Heaven Can Wait was always my song. Yeah. As a kid, that was like, this shit is hard. Yeah. Um, Lady in My Life is a recent one for me because I'd be like, this shit is too slow. Mm -hmm. And then, like, the other day, I was like, this shit hit. And LL Cool J sampled it so well to me. Okay, I didn't know that. I got to turn oh, it, tune into that song. Yes. See, I, I would never claim to be the biggest Michael Jackson fan because I never did the deep dive you have to do as yeah. a real, like, deep fan yeah. to learn everything about MJ. Like, yeah. I just learned his music, and sometimes, like, I've read by uh, stories about him, like, Lady of My Life. He was in he was in the studio and he wasn't hitting it exactly how Quincy thought he felt. Yeah. So he said, "Turn off the lights." Yep. He sang it in the dark <laughs> and he sang it. And that take is what we hear today. Mm -hmm. So that like I learned little tidbits, but niggas be knowing like that shit in the back of their head, little yeah. facts and shit about MJ. Yes, I know a lot about him. I love Michael Jackson. <laughs> Have you been seeing that uh, meme of him talking about like Michael? People say you've been having surgeries. Oh, no. No, God, <laughs> Lord, no. <laughs> like, it's a video. I wish I would have cued it up. It's a video of him just um, interviewing, asking him about the surgery yes, he had. I know what you're talking about, yes. <laughs> that shit killed me. Because yes. he know he had surgeries. But yeah. a lot of the surgeries he had were corrective. Yeah. They were corrective. They fucked it up the first time, so he had to keep getting his nose done over and over yeah. again. So. Yeah, plastic surgery wasn't what it is today so it fucking everybody gets plastic surgery yeah everybody so y'all right, chill. Chill. <laughs> chill well you know you know everybody get plastic surgery everybody made fun of michael jackson for his plastic surgery oh you hated being black 
You're a celebrity. You get plastic surgery. So do you? Did you ever research the whole skin change? Yeah, skin color change. Yes, he has lupus. Yeah, he had lupus. I thought it was like villa vitiligo. Lupus. Okay, you could get vitiligo as a result of lupus. Okay, because my mom has. Sometimes she'll get little patches of skin that flake off and lose melanin. Yeah. And so because he was diagnosed with lupus, he vitiligo came as a as a result of it. Mm -hmm. So yes, he had vitiligo and. You know, I kind of judge him for a little bit. Like, I feel like you should have just came out to the world and been like, okay. this is what it is. Yeah. I have vitiligo and I'm spotty. Yeah. But he wanted to make himself all even. He was afraid of being judged. Yeah. And I think that's, for that time, it made sense. In the 80s, like, people yeah. are going to talk about you. So, like, that's what he did. He you don't think you. that's crazy for you to be like, some, I'm spotty and I don't want to be judged, so I'm just going to go white. I'm no longer black. I'm going to just go white. What would they call this nigga if he stays spotty? They would have called him jokes and like he would have been, he was already a comedian's joke. Like so many jokes about MJ. Yeah. That was wild. That thought process. <laughs> like, you know, I don't want y'all to judge me. I would just go white. That's but crazy. If you lived in the eighties, would you be a spotty nigga? I mean, MJ, that's just one of those things that the common folks just do not understand. When you do become a celebrity, you are under so much scrutiny and, but he is Michael Jackson celebrity. So it's the biggest yeah. Entertainer of all, all time. time. So his, that scrutiny is far different yeah. than just a regular celebrity scrutiny. If I was Pretty V and I was out here spotty, yeah. that'd be different. Yes, yeah. Pretty V is a celebrity to you. Yeah. So. Okay. <laughs> 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 all right. I'm going to give you another hard one. Oh, Lord. Uh, what is your top three Michael Jackson videos of all time? <gasps> Remember the time is maybe my number one. That's my number one. Because John Singleton directed. John Singleton is one of my favorite directors of all time. May he rest in peace. Okay. Um, and it was star studded. Everybody was in that video. Yeah. Remember the time. I think that's the best video of all time. I agree. I agree. I think Remember the Time is definitely number one. Yeah. Number two, Scream. Okay. Scream costs a lot of money for it to make. Um, and I think it's still so like relevant in terms of like how it was shot and how it looks today in comparison with other music videos you see it still looks very modern it's like oh you wouldn't know that this was shot in like whenever the fuck it was shot 1999 or 2000 or something like that yeah um so i will put scream damn 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 you rock my world oh wait wait i'm fucking lying i'm lying the bad video. Okay. You ever seen like the whole from the beginning time? From yeah. the beginning, like yeah. the whole movie. Uh, who was the dude that was that? Wesley Snipes. Wesley Snipes. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. The bad video is pretty cold. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that because you get to see like a, a side of him. It's like he's all sensitive. Yeah. And his tortoise shell glasses. I promise you, I'm bad. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Prove it there, little nigga. <laughs> That's basically the video. Basically, I am bad. Yeah. He's proving himself. He is so fucking humorous. It's like Michael Jackson is so funny, the decisions he's made creatively. Yes. The funniest, <laughs> the funniest, smartest nigga of all time. Uh -huh. Of all time. <laughs> when he died, bro, I cried my it's ass off because he's the only person that I ever viewed to be, like, special. Like, yeah. he's the only celebrity I actually really wanted to meet. Like, all these people, they just, just, just people to meet. Amen. But he just, man. He's super special. Yeah. It, the, that was, like, a 2009, June 25th, 2009 was, like, a pivotal day. I uh -huh. remember it broke the news. It was everywhere. And, like, for months, you heard Michael Jackson's music. It was Michael Jackson t-shirts. It was, like, everywhere you went, you were listening to Michael Jackson. I feel like WGC, I played Michael Jackson for days straight. From sun up to sundown, mm -hmm. it was impactful. I remember that entire summer. Mm -hmm. I remember that entire summer, and then the year after with the Wii game, you know, the Michael Jackson yes. experience, and like it was super impactful. That yeah. was that's a, a celebrity death nobody will ever forget. The Wii game is the best Wii game of all time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I literally spent eight hundred dollars to <laughs> get a Wii and get just that game, just that game, because they don't sell Wiis no more, and it yeah. cost a bunch. I'm like, yep. I don't care. So it's in that little white box right there. Yep. Here we <sighs> yeah. So, yeah, that's my guy. That's my guy. Love Michael. I, I, <clears throat> if anybody got something to say to me about Michael <laughs> Jackson, you can come <laughs> DM me personally and we can talk about it. Yeah. Because I will rebuttal you. And I got articles. That's, that's one of the things I remember the 
chats with you on social media is just anything with Michael Jackson related. Uh-huh. Beyonce debates with Michael Jackson. <laughs> 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 I wasn't gonna hit you with that today. I like you. Gonna I really. Gonna, get I me. wasn't gonna do that to you. Yeah, they gonna so, to today. The last thing I wanted to do with you before we close out. <clears throat> is to play this game that we play with guests called If the Shoe Fits. Okay. So I had Jonesy scrub through your Facebook <laughs> <laughs> and to pick up any <laughs> post that he found interesting <laughs> for you to react to and explain what this post is about. So I oh. think this around this time is when Black Lives Matter uh, movement was really rampant and we had a bunch of uproar within our community and it was election time. I Holy think that's sh- what this time this is period 2020? is. Yeah. Okay. So he got a bunch of posts from that time. How far back did he go? We'll see. Oh, shit. So this one, you had shared a post that said, fuck high school, were you popular in middle school? And you shared it July 29th of 2020. You said, I was bullied as, as fuck in middle school. Some of the worst time of my life. I got heat for a lot of y'all I went to middle school with. True. Does this stem from when you say you experienced racism or this is just totally different? Uh, damn. This is, wow. Uh, not white racism. It was Hispanics. Okay. People okay. Make fun of me. And all the bitches. Oh, I'm not going to name no names. Oh, you, oh. I'm no, not going to name not, no I did names. not say this is a no name game. I ain't going to name no names, but you know these people. Okay. You know, we all went to the same school. I went to Edgar's. Uh, for eighth grade, I mean sixth grade is Scott for eighth school, grade. High school, okay, okay, yeah. He used uh, to bully me, and hmm. uh, when I wore my hair natural, they'd be like, "I'm gonna give you that Layla." I ain't gonna say who said that, but you know her, okay. Oh, you know her. I'll tell you when this is done. Mm, yeah. Okay, yeah. Well, I'm gonna name names. Fuck here. <laughs> I don't Fuck know. Fuck here. Who? I don't know. I don't remember her last name. Kira but who? Which one? I, I was a new girl moving to Hammond. From Michigan City, Indiana, for sixth grade, and we we went to Eggers, and it was this girl named Kiera that tried to push me down the stairs coming out of French class because she liked this boy Jeremiah who kept trying to interact with me in class. Kiera. I don't remember her last name, but if I was to search her up on Facebook, I could try to find her. Did I go to school with Kiera? I don't think we did. You go to Eggers for sixth grade? No. Okay. Okay. So this is sixth grade. Yeah. But did Kiera go to Morton? Nah, I okay. think she went to Hammond High. I'm, I don't know very camera high bitches was dirty. Yeah, I didn't say what I yeah, said. Yeah, I just remember her name being Kiera. You gonna have to show me her. Yeah, I'm, yeah. We gonna we gonna we gonna throw shots at these these people. <laughs> <laughs> now this is another one. <laughs> August seventh of twenty twenty, you said Daniel Kalua should not portray Chairman Fred in the new Fred Hampton movie. Yeah, why? Cause that nigga is English or British. <laughs> okay, and he has said. Him and that other bitch that played Harriet Tubman, mm-hmm. he has said things about black Americans. So if you don't like black Americans, what the fuck is you portraying one for? That shit is point. dumb. That's a good point. So go play a British man, nigga. Uh-huh. Go play a British man. So, so, so if you proclaim hatred for black Americans. Don't portray them. Okay. Period. Okay. Just like that, that Harriet Tubman bitch. I don't know her name. But she, ooh, she in a relationship with Lena Waithe, that girl. You know who I'm talking about? Oh, really? About? They dated? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right, all right, all right. Mm-hmm. Well. Damn. <laughs> oh it's a long God. one. God. August 10th, 2020, you said, it's embarrassing to see the news this morning. It really is because I'm a part of a Lakeview neighborhoods group. Most of the people in my community are white, and they are fucking laughing at black Chicagoans calling us thugs and thieves. And I hate that shit. To refer to people of color as thugs and thieves is racist. But at the same time, what the fuck are we doing? Y'all looted downtown and our communities based on false news? I don't remember the false news part. I forgot what the fuck was happening. But, yeah, so my dad has a house in Lake in Wrigleyville. That's, okay. where, that's where I stay and do business out of. Okay. And so I'm a part of the group chat the little Facebook group and all these white people were scared as fuck that black people were going to come to the North side and start wrecking their shit. Like we was wrecking shit out this way. Mm-hmm. And so they're having conversations and making posts like we need to do things. We need to do something about it. And you know, they're going to come up here, these thugs and these thieves. And I'm like, these thugs and these thieves, like bitch, what the fuck are you really trying to say? Yeah. That, that'd be the part for me. And, and, and the part that gets me is that it claims to be, the north side where I live is liberal. Yeah. And so 
it's liberal, so there's no racism, but it is. It is. Y'all are scared as fuck. You live in a city of Chicago, and you talking about thugs and thieves. Yeah. But you with a step. You you don't go past Sox Thirty Fifth, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> but you also refer to our people. I forgot what the fuck them niggas was doing, but niggas was doing shit that was unnecessary. Like, okay, reparations. Okay, go steal a couple candles. But, uh, you know, like, you know, looting your own community and fucking it up in your own community where your kids got to go to school is like, okay, bitch. Like, I get the big corporations, but, like, small businesses got hit during that time, too. Mm. And I don't think this was a George Floyd thing. Some, something else had happened. And it was like, oh, we finna go loot. I forgot. I would need context on it. Oh, I feel like it was a shooting, a police shooting with, in Chicago that happened or something. Or we didn't like the decision of something. 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 But, yeah, nah, I'm, this wasn't about George Floyd. Okay. We got two more. <clears throat> now, <laughs> y'all picking the political shit. Now, that's, that's what the type of time you was on at that time. Oh, wow. August 11th of 2020, you said, if you don't vote because you're mad about having a pick between a lesser of two evils, you are a hoe. I said what I said. <laughs> Why a hoe? <laughs> <laughs> you're a hoe. <laughs> That's some hoe shit. So I'm guessing you voted Biden. Yeah. And oh, now that we look back at that and everyone's commentary about choosing between the two evils, what is your perspective today? If you had to rethink that election now okay i think voting is important okay and i feel like black people are gonna get mad at me for this but i do think voting is important okay I think it's important i think especially i mean like fuck the federal level right mm -hmm. i think you should definitely be participating at the state and local level because those are the things that directly affect you yeah and so don't get on social media and don't get upset when things don't go your way or when your cousin got locked up because of this judge didn't vote in his favor but bitch you're not voting yeah so if you want things to go in your favor you need to be involved like you need to do your due diligence yeah um so damn was this was this i, I made this about august 11th Damn. Uh, okay, so did 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 Joe Biden win the presidency in 2020? Yeah. Okay, I forgot. That was a weird year. Yeah, that was when it was Trump and Biden. Wait, right? Or Trump and Hillary. Maybe No, Trump and Biden. Okay, Trump and Biden. Uh yeah. Yeah. I'm not voting for Donald Trump. Yeah, that yeah. Was, that was the whole lessons of evils because they yeah. both wasn't yeah. niggas we want to vote for. Just vote for Joe Biden. Who fucking cares? Do you want Donald Trump to be the president again? I know niggas is like, hell yeah, he got our stimulus checks. Y'all are fucking hoes. <laughs> I said what I said. Okay, I got pushback because I literally just talked about this yesterday. I think that black people, this is going back to the irrational show. If we keep doing things the same way and keep getting the same outcome, why do we think if we do it again, it's going to be differently, right? Hello. So with voting particularly, we're always told to just go vote. Go vote, do your thing, exercise your right. Specifically to our community, we're also told to go vote. But these niggas, every, like the people that don't vote say like, what the hell they going to do for us? They don't do shit for us. Our communities, right. we just see what our communities like every year. And it's like, ain't shit changing for us. Right. So it don't motivate people to want to go do anything, right? Right. So me, I feel as if, because I'm an active like, citizen of my communities and I vote and I do my due diligence on things, I see it from that perspective, not wanting to go vote uh, because, and not from their perspective, but not like for their reasoning, but because there's a group called Eidos, uh, African Descent of Slavery. Mm -hmm. And this is when Dr. Umar was like really becoming, like introducing himself into the world, right? Mm -hmm. And so I was like listening to their rhetoric and I'm like, Maybe we should withhold our vote for a year or two just to see what would happen. Not thinking it's going to be successful or not, but just to see what would happen since we've never done it. Right. And maybe we might get a different income outcome. If we don't, cool, that's a lesson learned. But if we do, we will never know unless we do. Yeah. And so that's my take on this. I want us all to withhold our vote for two Federal elections, not state, local. We do that. But federal elections withhold the black vote. No blacks go vote. No ones go to rallies, nothing. Until one of these candidates publicly say that they're going to specifically target our community for some things that's supposed to in, uh, improve us in yeah. some way. 
I think that's an interesting take, and mm-hmm. I like that because these politicians, it's a game. Yeah. And they are considering the black vote. Yeah. And they are considering the white vote. And they're playing into the ant they're playing into that. Yeah. And so I do think that's an interesting take and it's important. And I also want to make it very clear, I understand for a lot of black people it, it voting is inaccessible. Yeah. They make it very hard for you to vote. If you have a felon, if um, you know, I know in certain counties, especially in Georgia, voting is an issue. And so I know that it's a racist thing. It's a systemically racist thing where they yeah. make it harder for our people to vote. Yeah. So I don't want to talk about voting without not acknowledging that because yeah. I do know that they try to make it inaccessible for and us. And that should mean our votes matter if they try to make it difficult to vote. So Exactly. I think withholding the black vote wouldn't be a bad thing. Mm-hmm. But I think at the bare minimum, State. local vote. Yeah, local, local elections voting. get involved in your, within your communities for, for sure. sure. For sure. Okay, so we got one last one to go. August 17th, 2020, you said, ain't no way, lying ass people. The bridges come up and down too slow. You have ample time to run down. You intentionally climb <laughs> What the hell would you talk about? Damn, he just picked random shit. Uh-huh. We don't have a talk when I see him. Uh, okay, it was a video of these white people <laughs> chilling out like on like the, it was either the Wabash or the State Street uh, bridge downtown. Uh-huh. And the bridge was all the way up and these fucking white people just chilling they're uh-huh. like we got stuck you didn't fucking get stuck that shit go up slow as hell you ever sat at them <laughs> bridges downtown so you made a post to respond to them <laughs> jonesy must have cropped it out because most of the times that i post on facebook it's connected to something like so I'm you sharing. probably had comments underneath it. yes like okay. this is probably i shared the video of the bridge okay this is no context he should have included i mean video. that's it that's it because you see the like comment and share so that means you might have probably put stuff in your comment thread and it's not there for just the status i promise a video was connected i would not just make a status <laughs> okay i promise yeah, they had ample time. All right. Well, thank you for playing If the Shoe Fits. That is wild. Now, to end this episode, we always ask for gems to be dropped. Do you have a gem that you would like to drop? A gem? Mm-hmm. G-E-M? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, live your life. Fuck these people. 99 my mama, my mama always told me that 99% of people were cowards. And so if you are scared about what people think about you, don't be scared. Live your life. Who cares what people think? Live your life to the to your fullest potential and do what you got to do. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. I like the gym. All right, Layla. Thank you for coming out, shooting this episode with me. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed your time. I did. I think this was great commentary. I did. <laughs> yeah, it was great. <laughs> and yeah, uh, that's it. Cool. So thanks. if you're on YouTube, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and hit that bell. And if you're on your favorite streaming platform, thank you for tuning in and make sure you leave us a rating. Period. Peace. Peace. Just watch the damn podcast.